coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Boom Supersonic gets authorization for supersonic flights. Sport Aviation Alliance laying groundwork for no holds barred consumer advocacy. BRM Aero and H55 announce fully electric B23. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Boom Supersonic gets authorization for supersonic flights. Boom Supersonic got the first instance of special flight authorization to go supersonic, planning to push their XB-1 aircraft beyond the sound barrier. The FAA granted the authorization for them to test fly at Mach 1 Plus in the R-2508 complex and part of the R-25515 high-altitude supersonic corridor. The FAA says that it completed a thorough review and environmental assessment, paving the way for future supersonic flight testing in the commercial sphere. The testing will see the XB-1 push the limit with a T-38 chase plane tagging along, monitoring, recording, and adding some extra safety of flight assurance. Naturally, the authorization extends to the chase plane, too. The R-2508 complex is near the old stomping grounds of legacy X-planes, with the X-1, X-15, and SR-71 once proving their mettle in its skies. The news comes pretty fast after the XB-1's first standard subsonic flight, which occurred near the Mojave Air and Space Port in Mojave, California, at the tail end of March. They'll systematically expand the flight envelope during the campaign, sussing out any discrepancies between expected and actual performance. As they go through the list of checks and tests, they expect to take about 20 subsonic flights before actually attempting to go beyond Mach 1. After the break, CAF Normandy C-47s to fly at Salus Museum, France in June. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So for me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller's gonna be right for me. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. CAF Normandy C-47s to fly at Salus Museum France in June. This June, the commemorative Air Force is bringing two significant pieces of World War II aviation history to the Salus Museum in France for an exceptional event commemorating the 80th anniversary of D-Day. The aircraft, the C-47 That's All Brother, and the R-4D Ready for Duty will be part of a larger exhibit organized by the Salus Flying Museum, the D-Day Squadron, and the French Wing of the CAF. Scheduled for Wednesday, June 12th, the event allows the public to explore these historic aircraft closely. NetJets pilots ratify revised contract. NetJets pilots have ratified a revised employment contract after a year of tough negotiations. This new agreement, approved by a majority vote among the pilots, promises a substantial 52.5% increase in overall compensation, reflecting the pilots' pivotal role in the company's operations. The ratification process ended a period of acrimonious discussions between NetJets and the NetJets Association of Shared Aircraft Pilots. The negotiation outcomes have been overwhelmingly positive, with 78.31% of the voting members in favor of the new terms. 
IWASM and Southern Tier Brewing Cleveland team on third annual Trivia Night. The International Women's Air and Space Museum is teaming up with Southern Tier Brewing Cleveland for the third annual Trivia Night on April 30th, 2024. The event, running from 6 to 8 Eastern, will challenge participants with questions on space, museums, and Cleveland history. Proceeds from ticket sales will support IWASM's educational programs, which include a variety of initiatives such as the Dinner with a Slice of History program, Speakers Bureau, Lunch and Learns, tours, field trips, and summer camps. Uncle Sam recovers $2 million in brownfield accident that totaled MV-22. The United States has successfully settled for just over $2 million in damages following an aircraft collision that occurred May 30, 2020 at Brownfield in San Diego. This legal battle started in 2023, involving the Navy, which claimed extensive damages due to negligence and breach of restrictive covenants. The incident involved two aircraft, a parked MV-22 Osprey, owned by the Marine Corps, and a taxiing de Havilland DHC-6100 Twin Otter, owned by Kapausen Air Sports, but leased and operated by TAC Air Ops LLC and TAC Air California. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Sporty Aviation Alliance laying groundwork for no-holds-barred consumer advocacy. Paul Poboresny's work needs little introduction in the world of experimental aviation, sport flying, and hobbyist aeronautics, being attached to what has grown into a titan today. Sometimes growth makes it easy to miss the little things, and today's little guy is hurting more than ever just looking at the price tags of quote, cheap aircraft. Poboresny, seeing similar things while he was still with us, tried to forestall such a development, beginning the Sport Aviation Association, a group that centered itself entirely on the average, everyday pilot. Now a passionate group of industry vets have inherited the charter of Paul Poboresny's lesser-known organizational baby, and they're taking up his mission anew. The Sport Aviation Association, in concert with the Aviation Alliance, has four primary pillars creating its foundation. The propagation of functional, safe, and consistent aviation education far beyond the checkride, consumer education, advocacy, and guidance, a strident defense of the voiceless individual aviator, and a desire to fan the dying flames of community among those across the aeronautical world. Starting off, the Sport Aviation Association is a handful of seasoned experts from across the hobbyist spectrum, chief among them Cirrus founder of legend Alan Klatmeyer, former AOPA president Phil Boyer, and Aero News Network CEO and Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation Executive Director Jim Campbell. For more information, visit aviator.net. After these messages, BRM Aero and H55 announced fully electric B23. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. For over 30 years, the massive sport plane resource guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. BRM Aero and H55 announce fully electric B23. BRM Aero and H55 have announced the upcoming commercial availability of the B-23 Energic, the first fully electric aircraft in the CS-23 GA category. The development opens the order book for 2025 deliveries, with initial batches earmarked for a select group of flight schools under favorable commercial conditions. The collaboration between BRM Aero, known for their two-seater training aircraft, and H-55, a leader in electric propulsion systems, signifies a significant advancement in aviation technology. The B-23 Energic offers a flight endurance of one hour plus reserves, with a charging time of approximately one hour depending on conditions. 
This efficiency presents a sustainable alternative in aviation, promising lower ownership costs and the adaptability to update battery technology throughout the aircraft's life cycle. Certification efforts are progressing rapidly, with EASA expected to finalize the type certificate for the airplane and electric propulsion system by early next year. As yet, there is no word on when or whether the companies will obtain FAA certification of the B-23. The B-23 Energic is already attracting attention with high demand and special introductory offers for the first 20 aircraft, highlighting its appeal to flight schools looking to integrate electric aircraft into their training programs. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.